right, Will, how's it going? Hey, Jason, you're early, Good to man. see you. Good to see you. Thanks for inviting me to your lab. Oh, thanks for coming. I was just finishing up my uh, daily workout, so it's great to see you. Uh, let me take a quick drink from my water. For sure, make sure you hydrate when you're exercising. Oh, I love it, it's so refreshing. Oh, I feel great. I've been uh, doing more personal exercising in the lab, trying to save time and using more of my own energy and less electricity and energy around the house and at work. How are you doing? Doing great. I can see you've got your reusable water bottle there. That's an excellent way to limit your use of natural resources. Resources like the petroleum used to make plastic water bottles are limited on Earth, meaning that once we use them up, they're gone forever. As well, if we simply use the limited resources once and then throw them away, we're wasting our planet's natural resources. Human activity can have both positive and negative impacts on our environment, including the production of, of greenhouse gases like carbon. Very true. Yeah, I gave up those uh, plastic water bottles a few years ago, and this is my uh, trusty clean canteen. Use it every day. Fill it up probably about 10 times per day. Uh, someone asked me the other day about my own carbon footprint. I told him, you know, hey, I wear size 12 shoes. Do you think that means I have a larger carbon footprint than someone with smaller feet? Well, actually, yes. Your clownish large feet consume far more resources to produce than someone with smaller feet. But no, that is not what's meant by a carbon footprint. The production of good like your shoes is, uses natural resources such as rubber and water that require electricity and all have an impact on the environment. Traditional power plants that produce electricity create greenhouse gases like carbon. Greenhouse gases once released into the atmosphere allow the sun's energy to heat up the earth, but those gases trap the heat, just like the panels of a greenhouse. So, reducing the amount of electricity and natural resources that we use by reusing water bottles and having smaller feet can reduce the negative impact on the planet. So, today's design challenge is to create a solution for a device that we can use to help reduce our negative impact on the environment. That's a great challenge, but where do we start? Hey, I know. Smart, Smart guy, guy clothes. clothes. Hey, man, hey, you look right. good. Twins. Yeah. Hey, but we're missing something. Yeah, we'll probably need a table to work on. All right, let's do it. Great. How do we start with this challenge? Well, I have a rusty handsaw. We could shave down those gigantic feet of yours, allowing you to buy smaller shoes. Over the course of your life, you'll reduce the amount of carbon and, and resources needed to produce those shoes by hundreds of pounds. Uh, that sounds drastic. Uh, I guess you're right. We should probably try to understand the problem more deeply so that we could create something that you could actually use without creating a hardship like ruining my nice saw. To do this, we need empathy. This means we're going to try to understand the challenge from the point of the view from the user who is affected the most. In this case, that's probably the Earth. Mm -hmm. So let's start by calculating our own carbon footprints so we can better understand the various ways we impact the Earth. Mm -hmm. And maybe that will even give us a few ideas about things we can create to reduce our overall impact. I love it. Okay, hey, you know what? I noticed that uh, when I was using my washing machine and dryer every day, my carbon footprint goes way up. Uh, I need to learn more about conserving electricity and water around the house so I can think about ways to reduce the creation of greenhouse gases by things I use every day. Yeah, you know, uh, I noticed when I looked at the carbon footprint calculator, uh, some of the things that impacted my carbon footprint the most are my airline travel mm. every year and the amount of meat products that I eat. Animals, uh, products made from animals in my, in my food, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But I guess when you think about it, all of the resources that goes into years and years of, of raising animals mm -hmm. probably does uh, use a lot of resources, especially if that animal only ends up as being a part of one meal. Mm -hmm. So I think I want to look more deeply into how uh, animal products are impacting my overall carbon footprint. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, I noticed uh, solar panels outside of our lab, and uh, that's good for our planet, right? Uh, so, you know, I want to think about how does that reduce the lab's carbon footprint, and what else can we do to uh, minimize our impact on the environment, and why should we care? Good questions. Let's see if we can search the internet and, and find a few good books on, on clean energy and things like solar and wind that don't use limited resources. And we'll also look for more information telling us why we should care about reducing our impact mm -hmm. and what might happen if we don't. All right. Yeah, let's get to it. Wow, that was fast. 
You know, I learned that I can reduce my carbon footprint by using a clothesline, allowing the sun and wind to dry my clothes outdoors. But I also feel like we still haven't uh, done a lot of learning about this problem. Maybe we uh, watch too many cat videos. Uh, <laughs> they are distractingly cute, <laughs> but that's okay. When we use the design thinking process, we can always come back to each step over and over again until we have the best solution. So my suggestion now is why don't we start brainstorming some ideas that we would like to build, and if we feel like we need more research, we can always come back to it. Ah, uh, okay, here's the big question. How can we design solutions to minimize the impact of humans on one of these environmental factors? So like electricity usage, water consumption, or pollution. Let's make a list of all of our ideas, and then we'll look back over them, and we'll pick out the ones that we want to build and test. When we make our list, though, we should include every idea, even ideas that may seem far out or impractical, because even those sometimes lead to great discoveries. Great. How about uh, planting green rooftops on our school buildings? All right. Let's write it down. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about a hydrogen fuel cell to charge our phones? Ooh, I like that. Uh, we could build many more reusable containers for the things we need to carry every day, like our lunches and other supplies. That's great. Um, let's see, we could also build a car that uses the power of cuteness instead of gasoline. We could just put cat videos into the tank and drive wherever we want to go without creating any greenhouse gases. That seems kind of silly. Well, it's going on the list. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, so now we need to choose which ideas we should build, and we need to determine criteria and constraints for testing our designs. Uh, sure, criteria are the things that we want the solution to do. In this case, we want to make something that will reduce our impact as much as possible, and constraints are the limits that we put on the design so that it will be useful. I'd like to suggest no cutting of feet. Can we vote on that? Uh, Hmm, I guess. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at our criteria and constraints. So, our first criteria is that it must reduce the human impact mm -hmm. on the environment. Mm -hmm. And our second criteria is that it, we should be able to reduce our own individual carbon footprints. Yes. Our constraints, the device must be practical enough to be useful and must not involve the cutting of feet. Yes. Well, that sounds good. You know what? Um, I'm going to prototype a clothesline that can uh, actually move the clothes while they dry. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to work on something that might help me change from a more animal-based diet to a more plant-based diet. Interesting. Let's get started building. Let's do it. <laughs> Great job prototyping. So uh, what I've created mm -hmm. is a, a small model that will help me investigate growing plants in my apartment. Yes. I don't have a ton of room for, for raised beds and, and I don't have a backyard, so mm -hmm. I was trying to think of a way that would be useful and practical enough mm -hmm. for me to grow a little bit of food in, inside my apartment. Mm -hmm. So I did a little research about hydroponics mm -hmm. and it looks like you can actually grow with some soilless uh, grow medium. So I've mm. created a little device here. Yeah. If I pour the water in at this end, uh -huh. you can see there are sponges inside all these pipes and they'll take them across these little uh, seed germinators. Mm -hmm. so, so I plan to use this to see if I, can, if I can actually practically grow a few little seeds in here. So let's compare this to the criteria and yes. constraints. Mm -hmm. The first one is that it must reduce human impact on the environment, and the second one is that it should reduce my carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. I don't think this prototype will significantly reduce my carbon footprint because I'm really only growing nine small plants in this little germinator. Mm -hmm. It does, uh, it's certainly practical enough that I could use it in my apartment mm -hmm. and fortunately there's no feet that need to be <laughs> cut in order to uh, create yeah, this. That's a good, good so point. I think I've got some ideas for a second iteration mm -hmm. but I'm pretty happy with my, with my first shot. Yeah. What'd you build? I built a uh, clothesline because we have a place in our backyard where the sun shines very brightly and it's warm every, every time, same time every afternoon. So this is my first iteration um, and I, you know, I'm trying to still think about how I can get the clothes to, uh, 
you know, move or to shake somehow just to keep the keep them fluffy and fluffy soft, just fluffy like they came soft. out of the dryer. But exactly. yeah, what a great way to use some free energy instead of paying for drying your clothes every day. Right. And so it's a little wobbly right now, a little lopsided. The clothes are actually starting to touch the ground. Mm. So I'm going to need to uh, reinforce those posts on the end in my in my second attempt. And you have some incredibly tiny pants for a guy <laughs> with such big feet. Yes, thank you. Yes, I borrowed these from uh, my daughter, and hopefully she didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, well, it's a great model. Let's take a look at the criteria and constraints, yes. and uh, tell us what you think. So, yeah, my uh, same criteria must reduce human impact on the environment. So, you know, I won't be using my dryer, and uh, you know, when I do laundry, I'm going to use, uh, make sure it's a full load, uh, and then reduce the carbon footprint. I think this is a step in the right direction. Uh, especially if I can get the whole family kind of trained to use the uh, the clothesline every day. The constraints uh, must be practical enough to use, so I think we could, uh, this is a practical... Yeah, it sounds like you've got a perfect spot out there in your backyard for I it. I do, I already have it in mind. And then must not involve the cutting of my feet. So no I cutting really, of feet. No cutting of We've feet. We've done it once again. We're on the right track. Okay, well that was great, but I think we both found aspects of our designs that we want to improve, mm -hmm. so... I think it's time for another build. Let's do it again. All right, great. Well, now it looks like we've both finished our second prototypes, our second iterations. Mm -hmm. So uh, I built mine a little bit more to scale. This is the, the size of my window, and I've actually got some some foam sponge kind of grow medium in here. Mm -hmm. I've got these trays that will allow, once again, the water to be poured in. It should be uh, absorbed by the sponge. You know, water has that, that great adhesion of its molecules, so it, it kind of climbs those sponges real nicely. Nice. But I've angled everything, so I hope that this will give me um, an easy way to, to grow a few plants in that limited vertical space that I have um, in my in my house, uh, things are still a little bit, uh, a little mm -hmm. bit haphazardly placed. So I think I'll probably build one more prototype um, before I before I actually uh, plant in it. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with the the design, and I think this actually could reduce my impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. I think I could actually grow a, a more significant amount of food here and allow me to reduce my individual carbon footprint. It's practical enough to use and I still have both of my feet. Very impressive. Yes, you followed the uh, criteria and constraints. Let me tell you about what I did here. All right. Uh, so I built a clothesline, actually uh, measured my backyard area where the sun shines uh, brightly each day and I, I, I made this prototype to scale. So uh, you can see that the clothes are no longer touching the ground. I reinforced the posts, and um, you know I have a couple heavier clothing items that are hanging there now. And then if you come over here. Oh, wow, yeah, you've actually got the, uh, the full size, so you've got a third prototype built as well. This is great. Yes, and I borrowed uh, the solar jitterbug coming from Raft. Um, so it's solar powered, and it will actually shake the line uh, we tried to, as you know, we tried to use the lights, but we're going to have to go outside to get the solar energy. And it'll shake the line to keep those clothes uh, fluffy as they dry. Yeah, I can see you've got a little simple motor set up here. So when electricity flows through that, it should, uh, it should spin this little bit here, which will hit your string. And yeah, give your give your gym shorts a nice little bit of fluff as right. they as they dry outside. That's right. So yeah, I, you know, great invention. Thank you. So I'm let's happy. check it out against the criteria and constraints yeah, one more time. Absolutely. So you know, we said it must reduce our uh, human impact on the environment. Less using of the dryer. That that definitely feels like it's going to not only reduce your impact on the environment, but save you a couple of bucks. Right. And uh, we also said it has to reduce our carbon footprint. Visual carbon footprint looks good. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the constraints uh, must be practical enough for practical everyday use. Practical enough to use. It's still got the little shake feature, mm -hmm. so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be nice and bouncy. It's not going to be too much of a hardship to go away from your, from your dryer. And how are your feet looking? My feet are feeling great, man. No cutting. No cutting no today. Cutting. Thank gosh. I think, I think we've done it. It would be great to take this outside into the sun and, and give it a quick test, but I think for the most part we've met our challenge today. Yep, high five. All right. So if you see here, uh, the solar panel is... Uh, collecting energy from the sun and is uh, shaking the line so that combined with uh, wind my uh, shorts are getting dry without having to use the dryer. That looks great. Right? A little, little jostle there. So, looks like you've done it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of this one. 
And uh, thanks for the use of the solar power jitterbug. Go ahead. All right, high five. All right. <laughs>